The first thing I want to say is that optics matter, uh, particularly in Northern Ireland. And uh, yesterday, this speech was given in the Irish Embassy, and uh, I was just listening at the top of the programme. You had a little clip of uh, Sir Keir Starmer making his opening comments, and he says, thank you, Adrian. You will remember Adrian. Adrian O'Neill, who he's referring to, is the Irish ambassador uh, to the Court of St. James, in other words, to the United Kingdom. So he's making this speech in the Irish Embassy in London, and I think that that will not be lost on unionists uh, right across the United Kingdom. And of course, it's not the first time uh, that we've noticed uh, that optics matter, because when he came over to Dublin, something which he referenced, um, he went to the Republic of Ireland first before he actually came to Northern Ireland, which again uh, was noticed uh, by unionists. He then, as you rightly say, goes on to say in his speech uh, last evening that he's going to fix the Northern Ireland Protocol. Well, what does he think the government's been trying to do uh, for this past 18 months? That is what they've been trying to do uh, with the European Union. Of course, the European Union are not looking for a new mandate to try and fix the protocol. They say, there it is. Uh, we have to work within the protocol and we're not changing it, even if it's causing huge problems in Northern Ireland, even if it's fundamentally undermining the Belfast Agreement, which, as you know, is the basis for our institutions here in Northern Ireland. Uh, and yet Sir Keir Starmer just blandly says he's going to fix it without any detail at all. And really, it is a little bit incredulous to believe that the European Union are going to believe someone who actually would fought against the referendum in 2016, who actually didn't accept the result of the referendum in 2016 and was trying to have a second referendum with Remain on the uh, ballot paper. So it is all a little bit of virtue signalling, I think, Mercy, and uh, very disappointing to see it happening. You know, I was interested to hear him use the word honest. You know, I, I am the honest broker. And I did wonder whether he's using this opportunity, I'd love to know your thoughts on this, whether he's used this opportunity to, to basically cast himself in a favourable light without having the interests of Northern Ireland at the heart of what he's saying. Is that your reading of it? Yeah, he wants to portray himself as uh, the honest broker. He wants to portray himself as the lawyer. He, he reference he always references the fact that he's a lawyer in his speeches, and he did again last night. You know, I'm a lawyer, so I'm going to set out in detail what I mean, and then doesn't set out in detail yeah. what he means. We've all uh, worked with lawyers like that, though, right? That's a typical lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, should I now declare that I was a lawyer as well? Uh, maybe I shouldn't. Um, but uh, I do think um, that this is a, a lot of bland slogans. He isn't going to be able to fix uh, the Northern Ireland Protocol unless he's strong with the European Union. And of course, what he has actually done uh, by this speech is weakened the government's hand because the European Union are looking to Labour and saying, OK, Europe, uh, Labour is far more uh, Europhile. Um, than the Conservative Party. If they get in in the next election, uh, maybe uh, we'll be able to keep the protocol as it is. Uh, and therefore, they will hang out uh, for that, even though the government has set out in very clear terms what they need to see happening in the command paper from last July. That was ignored, and that meant that the government had to take action with the bill that's currently going through the House of Commons. So I can't see how he's going to fix, as he says, the Northern Ireland Protocol, unless he's going to take an even harder stance than the government is taking now. If you could wave your magic political wand, Arlene, what would this situation look like tomorrow morning? Well, uh, first of all, we wouldn't have checks within our own sovereign territory of the United Kingdom. Uh, goods would be able to travel uh, between Great Britain and Northern Ireland without customs checks. Uh, I think that that's what people expect when they live within a territory. Uh, if there are goods that then have to go into the Republic of Ireland that come through Northern Ireland from Great Britain, then those goods can be checked. Uh, as you will both know, alternative arrangements were put forward during the negotiations. They were dismissed, uh, not just by the European Union, but by many Remainers. And in actual fact, many of those alternative arrangements are now coming back again. And those unicorn solutions, as they were called, would have actually solved a lot of the problems that we have to, de to deal with here in Northern Ireland. But can I just say as well, Dougie's right about this point, and I was listening to him. This isn't just about businesses and what works for a certain section of businesses. I'm quite sure the businesses that Sir Keir Starmer met were handpicked 
uh, when he came to Belfast. Uh, I think it's also about the Belfast Agreement, and he did not mention the Belfast Agreement in his speech last night at all, even though Tony Blair said very clearly that the protocol is currently undermining that very Belfast Agreement. OK. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Dame Arlene Foster there, better known as GB News presenter, uh, <laughs> joining us to shed a bit of light on it. It's such an intractable situation, yeah, isn't it? I, I'm not having, you know, Sir Keir Starmer, with all due respect to the man, lecture me about, you know, divisions ca caused mm. by Brexit. He was one of the architects of those divisions. He's voted d um, several times, dozens of times, against Brexit legislation. He mm. wanted to have a second referendum. He was at the centre of many of those divisions uh, caused by yeah. Brexit. So, you know, it's a bit rich of him to be saying this now. But anyway, that's my view. What is yours? GB Views at gbnews.uk.